Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I have a question. Why do people believe that when they get in relationships that they should be the same? And when I say that, for some reason or another, people believe that they should get involved or be with people that are like them. But, you know, where would there be really anything to learn? You know, I, I, I think that relationships are about learning. That means that if I attract someone to me, they probably have some of the same things that I have within me that have not developed. And with that being said, that person will help me to see what I need to develop and vice versa. And so what I found in life is that people were always saying, well, he's not, we don't have any interest. We don't have this and we don't have that um, alike. And the likeness that you have with people that you feel like you should be with, you still bored with them. You know, you get you, you get in a relationship or you're married to someone and you're, you're still bored because what you haven't done is searched within. Like there's a deeper part of every one of us. And when we come in this world, what's happening is, is that we're only living out of surface identity. That means that we haven't went into the deep. It's like when you look at the conscious mind, subconscious mind, and the superconscious, the only part of us that we've really lived out is the sub, which means that everything about us is pre-recorded. We take information from our parents, our grandparents, but we have not begun to live out the authentic part of us. I think that that's kind of deep. I know some people will listen and they'll say, yeah, I don't know about that, but you got to think because sometimes you are running away from yourself and you're running away from the deeper understanding of who you are. You've been shallow hell or shallow um, Hillary because you didn't want to do the work. You know, when you think about people and they're lazy, they're only happy with something they think will make them happy like material things that's shallow hell everything about life is material I gotta get this I gotta get that and then I'm still not satisfied when I get it I still want more of this and I want more of that and that's human nature but you know we grow up and we get to a place where we see Man, I did all of that. I tried that. I tried that. I'm not happy with myself. It's not really that you're attracting people that don't understand you or they don't have a likeness to you. It's just that you don't want to see anything but what you want to see, right? And I hope that's clear because I've studied a whole lot of behaviors, you know, um, up until my master's degree. And I'm in the um, doctrines level now. And that's not to say that I know everything. I'm open. But one of the things that I, I found even with myself is that I was running from the truth of who I was. And that truth was deeper. It was not my face, what people saw. It was deeper. And in order to get to that in-depthness, it meant that I would have to go inside. What did I get when I you know, I went inside, I got a peace of mind. You know, all of the things that mattered to me prior, like um, clothes and shoes and houses and cars and trying to make a lot of money, it didn't matter because at the end of the day, they wouldn't give me peace. You know, we couldn't even find the right woman or right man if we didn't find the rightness within, you know, within us. And I um, did a recording yesterday on no more drama, you know, and no more drama means or, or it, it takes us to the place of self-discovery. Um, all of the pain that's been within us has kept us, you know, looking outside of ourselves, searching, finding things that we could purchase, people to be with, only to find that they didn't satisfy us because we had to satisfy ourselves and that satisfaction would be within. 
you know, empty is as empty does. We attract empty because we are empty. Um, we, tr we attract drama because we are drama until we change those parts of us and we have the power to do it. Um, we keep attracting the same things, toxic relationships, um, violent uh, people um, in our lives, you know, alcoholism. The attraction is there because of addictions. Um, the addiction didn't just start with you or me. It started with um, sometimes back in the family. It goes back in the generations, which is why, you know, I started teaching a shadow class. Um, and, you know, that shadow class brought up some information to the, the young people that I work with that really helped them um, excel in their lives. They helped them to take responsibility for, them, for themselves because a lot of people... They blame their mothers and fathers for not being there um, empty. But at some point, even Jesus, you know, became a man, 13 years old, the, the bar mitzvah for Jews, you know. Some of us are so behind in time because we're looking at the wrong things. We don't even have our families together. We're separated and divided because we've taken on this consciousness that I gotta have things. And you sit down. And you find that the things just don't do nothing for you. The things, the things, you know? So I was thinking about that and I said, let me just record and give some information because the world and people are going on and they're empty. They're empty. And they're looking for people to fill them up. It's not possible. Only you have the power to fill you up. You go and begin your spiritual practice. That's where your feeling is. Even the atheist is going to feel better if they go in and start, you know, practicing because what you're doing is taking from other people. That's why you need people around you all the time. You know, if you're afraid to be alone, you you're afraid because you got your own inner demons you're dealing with. And those demons wouldn't be there if you weren't empty empty. So here, I want to read something that I um, saw uh, on the internet. It's by James Allen. And he says, I looked around upon the world and saw that it was shadowed by source and scorch, by the fierce fires of suffering. And I looked for the cause. I looked around but could not find it. I looked in books, but could not find it. I looked within and found there both the cause and the self-made nature of that cause. I looked again and deeper, I found the remedy. I found one law, the law of love, one life, the life of adjustment. To that law, one truth, the truth of a conquered mind and a quiet and obedient heart. And I dreamed of writing a book which should help men and women, whether rich or poor, learned or unlearned, worldly or unworldly, to find within themselves the source of all success, all happiness, all accomplishment, all truth. And the dream remained with me and at last became substantial. And now I send it forth into the world on its mission of healing and blessedness, knowing that it cannot fail to reach the homes and hearts of those who are waiting and ready to receive it. And so it was just so ironic because I was thinking about the individual that's empty and suffering silently because they have nothing inside. The thoughts of attraction being like attracts like, and it is not so. Because if like attract like, then how would we grow? How would we become anything more than what we are? I mean, is there a ploy that this has been seized, planted in our minds? And we believe that if it don't work, I don't need to try and work it more because I believe that they should be like me or they should be like, I want them to be, because this is the way that we think. 
Is this the way success and friendships and relationships come? Do we ever communicate and find a way to understand that we're different people and that we have different things to offer that could bring us into um, other types of success? When do we break off the rigid thinking and know that we cannot control things? If we control them, then maybe happiness will never come to us because we don't trust anybody but ourselves. Because there's not, it, light cannot attract light. The only way that it can is if it is planted within the individual and you don't know it. You are light. But if you meet someone and they're doing the same thing as you, where is the ability to learn anything? They're agreeing with you. That makes life too easy. I mean, we want challenges to grow. Now, I, I'm going to say this. We don't want challenges that's going to cause us to break and, uh, and fold. But we want challenges that make us grow. Something that makes us think. Because if I'm around people that don't make me think, I'm going to get bored. All right. If you have any comments or any anything you want to add, email me at ifwbuilders at gmail.com. Now, remember that we do coaching, um, life coaching. Um, if you're having anxiety, depression, you know, from the circumstances that have went on in the world, meaning COVID or, you know, having to stay at home orders all over the world, we have. Um, coaches that can help you, just contact me at that email. Um, we're on Instagram. I'm at Inner uh, Wealth Builders and um, at Change Agent Coach on Instagram and on YouTube at Interfaith Wealth Builders. We want to get the word out there, but mainly I want you to understand that like attracts like. Yeah, if it's surface and there's nothing more to dig in to get out of you. Uh, life may not be happy for you because you really are looking for more. So make sure whatever you're doing and whatever you're attracting, make sure the indebtedness has um, more imagination for you, meaning that you know you can find more there, that you're just not, you know, um, with someone because they agree to agree with you. What happens when they disagree with you? Yeah. What happens when they challenge you? You're going to run because you're insecure? That's where I'm going with this because we're deep people. We got to go in and change that subconscious. All right. Have a great day. Blessings.